<laughs> Jeez. What's up, sons? It's Blackguard with Son of Attack once again, and we were gonna have another talking head video, but it has turned into a how-to video for mining. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at how to properly optimize your RX 5700 XT for mining. This is not for people that are using their GPU for other purposes. Let me make that clear right now. If you are gaming and stuff on this, just watch this for informational and then go on about your day. For those of you trying to get the most performance out of your RX 5700 XTs, well, you came to the right place. Today, we're gonna to be covering the more power tool to write your power play table voltages down. We're gonna be covering the red BIOS editor so that you can modify that BIOS and strap the memory timings as well as edit the TREF and the proper way to do that. And then we're gonna be talking about my favorite part, the biggest discovery of the week. And that is gonna be that the new version of Team Red Miner has dropped the power consumption on RX 5700s and 5700 XTs between eight and nine watts, all the way up to 10 watts. In some cases, it's pretty impressive. So without further ado, let's get into it i say that and we have no picture Ta-da! all right so we've probably just destroyed our hash rate but what i want to show you guys here is this is it optimized well almost it's better on linux and we'll go over that while we talk about what we've done here and so on and so forth and there's some specific reasons but we're around 52 to 54 mega hash a second at 83 watts that can also be confirmed here with the kilowatt as you can see around 213 watts somewhere around there and if i just head on over here and close this out and stop mining this should drop to about 120 to 130 watts so we're getting pretty good power consumption numbers out of this uh even better on linux with the new team red miner but you guys want to know how we're doing it right that's that's the whole point of this so what i have here for you guys is the three things you're going to need on windows to make this function properly first of all you're going to need radeon adrenaline 2020 edition 20.9.1 the reason for this is because it is not supported the higher hash rates and the lower watts on the newer adrenaline drivers and so if you're going to want to get the best performance in windows for mining right now you're going to want to be running 20.9.1 if you are having issues with installing it of course you can open up your uh, folder and, and use ddu we've talked about ddu before as well make sure you use it in safe mode to clear out the registry entries because yes that matters when you're switching different versions of adrenaline so that's very very important currently we have that installed so we are good to go as far as all of that the next thing you're going to need are basically everything off of this page which i'll have linked down below the more power tool the red bios editor and so on and so forth the flash tool uh, flash 3.0.4 seems to work perfectly fine and you're just going to get all of those downloaded so the first thing that we're actually going to need to do is export our bios we have tech power up gpuz here to do that you will have to run it in administrator mode down here there's going to be a little button to save the bios so you're just going to click the save button and save to file we've already done this as you can see with the navi 10. so then we're just going to go ahead and click save and i'm going to go ahead and replace it so you guys see that we're all on the same page here another thing to note is that the super low power consumption is only on the samsung cards the micron cards still go to about 100 to 110 watts and that's just been true since the beginning that they take a little bit more power so keep that in mind but this does work on them we're going to go over each step next we're going to need to open red bios editor and we're going to go ahead and click load and we are going to load that navi 10 bios so here is where we're going to make all of our memory timing changes here 
and mine have already been made, okay? But for you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy the value from 1550 and paste it on 1800, 2000, and 2250. You're then gonna click save and you're gonna save over the same, well, this is really up to you. I like to say, you know, first step, second step, and so on. Uh, but you can save over the Navi 10 if you like, or name it something like BIOS modded, which is usually pretty helpful as well. So once you've done that, you're going to close Red BIOS Editor and reopen it. You're going to click load, and you're going to load the modded BIOS. And then you're going to go to your VRAM timings, click the down arrow, and select the next memory type. If you have even more than this memory type, you're going to need to do it on all of them. So you'll click down, and then you will copy the 1550 all the way down, and then click Save. And then you'll save as your modded BIOS, and then exit. So then finally, what you're going to want to do is open Red BIOS Editor one more time, load the BIOS modded. We're going to go over to our VRAM timings and we're going to click the 1550 slot. Now, we could do this actually now that I think about it, probably previous to this, it might be a little bit easier. Um, so you're not saving over and over. But the field that you're looking for is the TREF. The reason I want to show you this is because if we load our stock BIOS, which I believe I have in the download loads here, what you should see on the 1550 is gonna be somewhere around you know, high 2000s. This number is important because each graphics card is going to basically have a different TREF timing and you are going to want to understand what this is. Now, your calculation is pretty simple. You can multiply this times two, and you can multiply this times three. Three is gonna be the highest setting. Let me clarify this. Not all graphics cards, even if they're the same model with the same memory type, will run at the same timings. Do not copy the timing I am about to show you for the DRAM timing 12 right off the bat. My suggestion would be running it at times two, seeing if it runs, and then seeing if it runs at times three. This is very important because you don't want to just take one BIOS and upload it to your Hive OS and flash everything, okay? Please stop doing that. It's just, just, you're giving me a headache in Discord, honestly. All right, so the number is 2945. So I would multiply that times two, and then I would take 5890 and write it into this slot. Understood? Additionally, what you could also do is go ahead and take the original edit, the 2945, and multiply it times three. A lot of 5700s will run at the times three but not all of them. As you can see here, it's the 8,835. So you would just put in 8,835 into here. Once you've done that, you'll click OK, and then you need to proceed to do that for every single one. Not forgetting the second memory type, which is actually a good point because I had an example of my uh, modded BIOS here, and I did not do it on the second memory type. So we're gonna do that now so you can kind of see. I'm going to go ahead and this is TREFX3. Um, basically, it's TREF times three. Get it? So that's why it's named like that. So in here, what we're going to want to do is basically go through and we have 7485 in our 1550 here. If we go down to the second one, we are at 5625, right? So I'm going to come in here and just update all of these. Let me make sure that's numbers right too, because uh, actually we may be able to pump this a little bit further, which would be kind of fun, right? So if we go to downloads, ultra high, this is the BIOS. And if I go to VRAM timings, we had 2945. So calculator. We'll see if it runs at it too while we're at it. I'll go ahead and flash it. So this is 2945 times three. So that's 8,835. 
So I'm just gonna copy that out of that. I'm gonna go ahead and load my modded BIOS up real quick on the desktop. And we are going to go ahead and go to the timings and paste this in on all of the TREFs. Now I may have just screwed myself and we're not gonna post it all, but you know, it is what it is. You guys get to be along for the ride. All right, so I'm going to save that to, to the TREFX3 ROM. So we're going to save that. And then we're just going to go ahead, and I did do two in a row. The reason I say close and then do the next one is a lot of times it won't save the changes on one of them. So we're just going to go ahead and reload this and confirm that it saved the changes of the 8,835. All good there. Check them all. Okay, all good. So now let's talk about PowerPlay. So you'll notice you need to load an MPT file. Now PowerPlay can also write directly to Windows. So this can be a little confusing for people because if you want to save this to where that card can plug into any other system and when it's detected, it writes those registry entries, you can essentially load that MPT file into here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that. That's going to be using the more power tool. And we're going to go ahead and select our card. And you can see here that we already have some voltages shifted, right? So all good there. And one of the things that you want to shift is like on this card, for example, it's at 750. My recommendation would be going no lower than 700 unless you're testing, of course, going down to 650 works on some of these cards. It might be more of a headache than it's worth though for you. So if it is, just, you know, leave it at 700, take it down from 750 to 700. And that's going to help you get that, that power limit lower and lower right so at this point if you're just staying in windows and you don't care that much you can hit write SPPT and that's going to write the registry entries in windows but if you want to load it into your BIOS you're going to click save and we'll just name this uh, 700 MB right we're going to click save so at this point we're going to hit load MPT file and we're going to load the 700 See, now it says successfully loaded. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and click save and save to our modded BIOS ROM. So at this point, what that's gonna allow us to do is go into our Radeon overclocking software, etc., And it's gonna allow us to take that voltage slider down further than 750. That's why you do this, okay? No other reason. That's pretty much it. It just is what the software reads for how low you can go. If you're on Linux, to be honest, or HiveOS, simple mining, that sort of thing, you, this should be essentially irrelevant because it, it'll override it when you want to. You're not gonna have to like mess with that. But if you're on Windows, you're definitely gonna have to do it. So now that we have that saved, we've, we've created our BIOS, etc. You're gonna need to go back and you're gonna need to download the Flash tool. 3.04 plus Win has been working for me. So that's been pretty good. And if you scroll up on this page, which will be linked down in the description, you can find the commands that you're gonna need to use to flash the BIOS. So to flash the BIOS, the best thing to do is just to open a command prompt first after you've extracted the files and it will need to be run as administrator. And then wherever you have the ATI flash executable saved, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to. Now we did update this BIOS, so I am gonna go ahead and copy it, and we are gonna go ahead and throw it into the AMD VB flash paste. I'm gonna say go ahead and replace. And so now we want to do a control C on the directory. And then over in the command prop, we're gonna say CD for change directory and right click. And it's gonna change the directory, of course, to the downloads folder where we've extracted AMD VB flash. At this point, you can run a dir command <laughs> and you can uh, basically see that we are in the correct directory and we have access to AMD VB flash as well as the ROM. So at this point is where you are going to essentially flash your graphics card. Big note on this, if you flash it and it doesn't come back up, 
you will need to put it on a DOS drive and have a system with an integrated GPU to really flash it back. In some cases, you can flash it in Windows, but a lot of times now, it basically bricks the card from booting into Windows and it's really dependent, but you can still get into DOS as long as it's an integrated graphics processing unit. So like on the Intel CPUs, or if you're doing AMD, it's gonna to need to be an APU. The 3600s will not work. The 2600s, the 1600s, all that sort of thing. They don't have an integrated GPU, so it won't work. I just use a, a nice little Celeron that has that built in, makes it super simple. So now that that's out of the way, doing this could break your card. So, you know, be ready. And we'll do a follow up on how to save bricked cards later on. So at this point, you're going to do an AMD VB flash and then dash unlock ROM space zero. Press enter. Now it'll say ROM unlocked. At this point, we're going to go ahead and do flash the GPU. So we're going to do AMD VB flash and we're going to do space dash F space dash P space zero to target this the GPU that we want to flash. And then we're going to do TRE fx 3.rom which is the bios right here that we want to flash that we just wrote and we're going to press enter at this point it is going to go through the flashing process and then you will need to reboot your system all right if you made it this far then congratulations you haven't bricked your gpu yet so at this point what we're going to want to do is go ahead and open radeon software and we are going to go over the overclock settings for this particular setup so first of all what you would want to confirm is if you go into fine tuning controls you want to be able to confirm that you can go below 750. in this case we can now since we're on windows what i have noticed is two things happen which can be very frustrating one thing is that in this particular case we run into a big problem with the Radeon software being open along with running the miner. The reason for this is because it puts it in the wrong mode. There's two modes for the miner. One is A, which we're gonna go over, and one is B. Well, whenever Radeon settings is open currently right now on the system, it forces it into mode A, which is gonna hurt your hash rate. So if you've gotten to this point and then you run the miner, as we're about to show you how to mine with it, and the hash rate's like 35 mega hash a second, you're gonna to need to make sure that you close Radeon settings and reset, restart the system, but make sure that your, your overclock is still applied here. Another thing that is interesting is like, you. You can, if you're on Linux right now, go down to 1275, like I talked about. I have the Linux GPUs running at about 69 watts at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, the Windows, because of just the way it functions, is not really letting me get that low on Windows. But I'm able to get that low on Linux with these settings, and that's the 1275 on the core with the 700 uh, millivolts and then if you scroll down here we're at 1800 megahertz on the memory somewhere around 1750 to 1800 megahertz on the memory is going to be about your limit and that's just the way it is it, it's also going to depend on you know if you have micron memory it's also going to depend on how good your memory is in some cases the samsung's won't go a nudge a budge nothing over 1750 and in some cases it'll just skyrocket over there so for fun i'm going to try these settings just because we're you know we just uh, did do some other modifications i'm going to see if i can get it to work so we're going to hit apply and then we're just going to go ahead and close radeon settings and we're going to restart now we have to do this restart after we apply the overclock because otherwise for whatever reason like i mentioned it pushes the new team red miner into mode a no matter what i've tried if the radeon settings are open but that's okay because the settings still do apply and we're good to go there okay so you've gotten everything locked in everything's feeling good the next thing that you're going to need to do is open up the team red miner 8 Make sure you get it from the GitHub so you don't get 
in trouble there. You'll scroll down here and then download the WinZip. Make sure it's 0 .0, 0 0.8.0. And at that point, after you've extracted it, let's go over the config. So if you need a basics on how to create these configs, you can check out my how to mine Ethereum video. In this case, I'm aiming this more at the people that are already mining, obviously. Um, so, you know, go back and watch those, that content if that's what you're worried about. So uh, the start ETH is already here. We're going to right click and say edit. Uh, you're going to have your typical settings, the pool that you're mining to, your wallet address, and then of course this ETH config equals B. So this is the important part. You want to have the dash dash ETH underscore config equals B. And that's going to be pretty much the only thing that you have to add here. And then you're pretty much ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and start the miner. Now we did make some changes that could make this end very poorly for the video, but let's go ahead and see what happens. So the DAG's built now. It's still tuning though. So we'll give it a little time to tune. So yeah, I can tell you that on Windows for sure, this isn't going to work. Our limit's going to be around that 1400. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this out and open our Radeon settings. I wish I could show you guys on Windows that working, but unfortunately it just doesn't work out that way for us. So we're going to go back up to 1400 and 750. Click apply, restart the PC, be right back. Alrighty, so we're back and we're going to go ahead and just run the miner again. Okie doke, so it's spinning up and still auto-tuning. It'll probably go a little bit above this here in just a tad. Like I said, if you're running Hive OS or Linux right now, it's pretty easy to set all these settings and use uh, team, the latest Team Red Miner and just spin up at 55 mega hash at about uh, 69, 70 to 73 watts. But this is still a lot better. This is the best I've gotten on Windows now with these settings. So we'll go over and just show you guys because we did reflash it. Uh, we're right around 207 to 208 watts. So minus, you know, 130 or whatnot. And that puts us right around that 80 watt threshold with about 53 mega hash on Windows, of course. So. And I, I don't even have anything else really modified for this. So a, a couple of notes real quick for any of the uninitiated for Team Red Miner. You have two fixes down here. In some cases, this will pop up and say like, dead GPU, please run Watchdog. Don't worry, you don't have a dead GPU. Scroll down and double click Watchdog. The system will automatically reboot after 60 seconds and be good to go. If you want to see what the commands are here, um, it's just it's it's just a shutdown. That's it. That's it. But if it hangs because of it, that's all you got to do. Now, of course, I guess you could just reboot the system too, right? So then the other one is if it has issues mining right off the bat, it'll ask you to install a registry file. These are the registry keys down here. And uh, basically it is just going to add a TDR delay, D word, whatever, 0014 and the TRDDI delay. It's gonna add those registry edits and then you'll be off to the races. So that's uh, some things on Windows that you don't really have to do. Once again, on Linux or, you know, a Linux distro like hive os so i hope this video is helpful and you have a better understanding of what settings you're changing when you're going to flash your gpu especially the rx 5700s and addition additionally to that be sure to check out you know the referral links down in the description we will be going over basically these are the settings i'm using outside of the overclock so the only difference that I really have on Hive OS is that some GPUs are as low as 650 millivolts and some GPUs are only like 700 millivolts with a couple around 725. And what that has done is taken all of my Micron 5700s down from 120 watts or so 
all the way down to around 100 to 110 watts, just depending, like I said, on the millivolts there. All of them, the core clocks right now, are able to go down to 1275 without any impact on hash rate on Hive OS, which is amazing. That's why we're able to drop the, drop the core voltage there even lower. So what Team Redminer has done here is fantastic. You will get that 10 watt or eight to nine watt gain pretty much no matter what. But then if you follow these guides and really take to heart what changes we're making and why, then you can really get yourself into a great, fantastic position. Way ahead of anything uh, out currently. I mean, this beats the 3060 Ti, this beats the 3080, obviously it beats the 3090. And because there's so much support for these, it also beats, of course, its own line up right the 5600 xt which we'll talk about the 5600 xt if you guys are interested the only thing you can really change on that is the tref so it is possible to get a better boost out of that but the rest of the timings like strapping the memory timings doesn't appear to be working right now i haven't really gotten any working as much as i've played with it so the only thing you're able to do is do that calculation on the dram timing 12 slot within red bios editor and changing that uh, to double or triple now with the 5600s i've only really been successful at doing double i haven't been successful doing triple so keep that in mind anyways thanks for watching be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe down below and i'll see you next Tuesday.